Let's do one more word with Lawrence Krauss, whose latest book is called A Universe from Nothing, Why There is Something Rather Than Nothing. I want to take you back to July 4th of last year. European Center for Nuclear Research announced that its two largest experiments in the Large Hadron Collider had found the Higgs boson. So let's start there. What is that, first of all? Okay, well, they found that they found uh, tempting evidence that there was. Tempting I think, evidence, yeah, okay. Yeah, it, it has to be clear. The Higgs boson is a, obviously an elementary particle, like the other elementary par particles of nature, quarks and photons, the particles that carry light, etc. It's a very special particle because it's related to an idea at the basis of what's called the standard model of particle physics, which is really uh, a model that explains the, the, all the forces in nature other than gravity and does it very well. It's an, it's an amazing revolution in our understanding of nature that it was unheralded over 50 years. 50 years ago, we understood one of the four forces in nature. We now, as a quantum, quantum theories, understand three of the four forces in nature. That's the standard model. But behind it was this really slippery idea that I didn't believe in, actually, that, because it just seemed too, too easy. And that is that, that the particles that make us up get their mass by an accident. That there's this background invisible field throughout all of space called the Higgs field that is there, but you can't see it. And elementary particles are moving through it, like, like, like swimmers through molasses. Some of them are interacting with that field and experience a resistance because they're interacting with it, and they act like they're heavier. Some are interacting less strongly, they act like they're lighter, and some, like the photon, doesn't interact at all and remains perfectly massless. So mass is an accident of our existence. It's not fundamental. It's an accident of our existence. Now that sounds like a nice story, but Science is more than stories. You need to, it makes predictions. And one of the predictions of the quantum physics is if you slap that field really hard in one point, it'll spew out particles. That's what quantum mechanics says. And we built the Large Hadron Collider because if our theory was correct, if you slap space in a small enough region with enough energy, you'd pop out these particles called Higgs particles. And as I say, we built that machine to do that. I actually thought they wouldn't be there. And lo and behold, they were. Well, they're not 100% sure they found it, though, are they? No, no, at this point, they're not. In fact, the machine is down for a couple of years. We're waiting to upgrade it. The evidence is getting stronger and stronger. But in science, you have to, if, you, if you're going to make a profound discovery, you better, you've got to rule out, rule out all the other possibilities. And they can't, it, it's so right now, it walks like a duck and quacks like a duck. Hmm. So we're pretty sure it's a duck. But we still have to keep checking. And Higgs is still around, isn't he? Higgs is still around, and He's uh, in his 80s, I guess. And, now, and he may get a big prize next October, and <laughs> we'll see. Higgs is around. It was a, it, you know, to me, it's amazing. If you're a theoretical physicist like me, and you're sitting in late at night writing down some things with mathematics, it, it is truly amazing, and terrifying, to think that night, nature might obey the, that those those inventions of yours, and mm -hmm. and it happens very rarely. Most often, you're wrong. And uh, we don't say that too often, but in science, most often we're wrong, because if we weren't, anyone could do it. <laughs> and this was an idea developed in the 1960s, and it's taken us 50 years to validate that idea, and it was right. It's one of those amazing examples of when sort of theory leads experiment. It's usually the other way around. Almost always in science, it's the other way around. Now, the theory was based on past experiments. It just didn't come out of nowhere. But it was an amazing example of the beauty of the human imagination. Did it distress you, presumably, to sell magazines when some magazine called this the God Particle? Well, actually, it was a friend of mine who's a physicist who called to sell books. And yes, it distressed me greatly. I, I wrote a piece for Newsweek that called it the Godless Particle. Because in fact, it's further, yet, yet one further example of the fact that we're here by a cosmic accident, that we're just uh, uh, cosmic bystanders. And if the Higgs field didn't exist, we wouldn't exist. And, and so, um, yeah, it sells. It sells uh, newspapers and books, but there's nothing religious about it. Who was the guy? Leon Letterman, a Nobel Prize winning physicist who likes to tell a good story. And he claimed he wanted to call it the godless particle, and his publishers changed it. But I'm not sure I believe it. Did you take him to task over it? Oh, of course. A lot of, a lot of us have, yeah. And? Yeah. Well, you know, he, he laughed all the way to the bank. <laughs> <laughs> As we do at the end of yeah. this interview. Yes. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks. Support Ontario's public television. Donate at TVO.org.